Okay, here we are again. We have some more serious things for labor and delivery. Once a cat is in hard labor and she's pushing, if the contractions are uncoordinated, if they're non-progressive, she may need a little assistance and then we use the oxytocin. It's a very safe product if it is used correctly. And you should always consult your veterinarian for the proper use of any of these medications that I'm going over. You really just need to be very, very careful because you can kill a cat with all of this stuff. You have to be very cautious. You have to know what you're doing. You also need to know how to give injections if you're going to use oxytocin. So if you don't know how to do that, or if you're just a little uncertain with it, get some specific training from your veterinarian. What I use are three cc syringes, and I always have a box of them, and these are 25 gauge needles. And I have three or four of them always on hand because you only want to use them one time. They're disposable. After you use them, you need to throw them away. Oxytocin comes in a great big bottle like this. It'll last you a lifetime because with cats, you just need a tiny, tiny amount. I usually start with about a quarter of a cc, which is about there, just a very, very small amount. If I get very concerned about a girl, then I might use a half a cc, but never do I ever use any more than that. Vets might use more, it just depends. I really don't know what the protocol is, so always talk to your vet first. But my cats are on the smaller size, they're Persians, so my females are only weighing about six to seven pounds. So I start very low with the oxytocin. You don't want to give it more than just a couple of times because if you do, it becomes ineffective and you'll get into trouble that way. So only use it when necessary, when labor has not progressed, or when the contractions are uncoordinated. And by that, I mean they're not, there's just no real rhythm to them and you'll be able to see the ripples in the stomach when labor begins and you just want those really hard, good contractions. A really good, strong contraction you will see because the whiskers on the uh, cat's face will actually pull forward as she strains and pushes. That's a really, really good, hard contraction and a very progressive contraction. So look for that. Um, the next drug that I have on hand is called Dopram V. This will ab absolutely save lives. It's a respiratory stimulant. Not a lot of people know about it, and probably that's a good thing because it can be very dangerous. You can kill a cat or a kitten with this drug. You have to be careful with it, and I'm going to show you how I use it. Dopram comes in two forms. It comes in injectable or in drops. I recommend you get the injectable because with tiny little kittens, it's not going to take much. If you put one whole drop in their mouth, it can be too much and it can kill them. So what I do is I take off the little lid and I dip a Q-tip in the liquid and then I bring the Q-tip up and I actually wring out the Q-tip as hard as I can all around the top. Put the lid back on. And then I take this dampened Q-tip and just touch the kitten's tongue with it. Just touch it with it. You'll be amazed at how quickly that kitten will start breathing and sputtering. It absolutely will save lives. I have saved many kittens' lives with the Dopram V. Again, talk to your vet about it. It's scary stuff. It, you need to take it very, very seriously if you use that product. Some people will um, put it in a syringe and then put a drop in a kitten's mouth, but you run the risk of overdosing because those syringes you can push a little too hard, and if you get too much in that kitten, you will send it into cardiac arrest. So be very, very cautious with that. Um, you can get it online, I'm sure, through some of the black market places. Uh, if your vet can get it for you, always get it through your vet. That's, that should be your first choice because then they can talk to you about it 
and educate you on the dangers of using it and how to use it properly. And show your vet, if you want to, the, the Q-tip technique that I use. It just gets such a tiny little amount in these tiny little kittens. I really think that's the safest way to use that product. Now, after your kitten is out and you've got it breathing, hopefully you don't ever have to use oxytocin or dopram, but they're nice to have on hand in case you do. So once you get the kitten out and you sever the cord, if the mother doesn't do all that, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, you can cut the cord with some little scissors if you want, but you have to be very, very cautious. You need to apply pressure to the cord before you cut it to get the blood flow to stop between the placenta and the kitten. So what I usually do, what most breeders do, is we tear the cord about a half inch to three quarters inch away from the body. You don't want it too long, you don't want it too short. Um, just a nice good half inch is usually acceptable. If you tear it with your fingers, then the bleeding stops on its own. So scissors will cause it to bleed, so you've got to be very careful and apply pressure with that. But tearing it with your fingers, the bleeding should stop. Then what you do is you dab on some iodine, which is just very good antiseptic, keep infection from going. And I might do that for the first couple of days till that cord starts to dry up really good. So that's the basics. That'll get you through the process. And I will show you more after our kittens are born, which should be just any day now. We're very excited waiting for these new ones.